guess what we're doing on today's show? We're jumping into the kitchen with dietitian Brooke Bullock because school is officially in full swing. For many of us, that means it's back to driving kids between school schedules and extracurricular activities. So who has time to always make them delicious and nutritious meals? Well, if you are crunched for time, don't worry because we've got you covered. Brooke and I will be showing you some quick and easy nutritious meal ideas on today's show, not just for kids, but for all you busy college students out there as well. But first, here's a look at what else is coming up on today's show. We learn why a nutritious breakfast is so important for kids while checking out some easy to make ideas. And Saskatoon police say they will be cracking down on school zone speeders. We tell you how you can avoid a ticket. Punch TV is the nerdiest show in Saskatoon. If you like comics, movies, games, stellar events and anything in geekdom, you'll love Punch TV. Host Jody Kaysen takes you in-depth with artists, writers, and guests from across the province, the world, heck, even the galaxy. Plus, regular updates from The Collector, The Movie Geek, and Tweet Beat. Watch Punch TV only on Shaw TV. We're at the Farmer's Market for today's show, utilizing their beautiful kitchen space as we show you some nutritious, quick and easy meal ideas for those who are back in school. But we'll start off today's show by kicking it old school. After becoming one of the most popular bands in Canada in the late 80s, Saskatoon's Northern Pikes have gone through their ups and downs, including a breakup. But as Simon Hyatt shows us, the band is back together again and they're having more fun than ever. We have the Northern Pikes from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Before the Sheepdogs and Widemouth Mason, the Northern Pikes were the band that put the Saskatoon rock scene on the international map. More than three decades after forming here, they returned for a hometown show recently, which they say can be a bit of a mixed bag. We've always had good shows here, some not as well attended as others, and, but that's just how it always goes with hometown gigs for bands, you know. Usually groups will say it's one of the, you know, odder shows to play, is their hometown, it's just, yeah. Mixed emotions. The five-time Juno nominees and Western Canadian Music Hall of Fame inductees achieved great success in the late 80s and early 90s on the strength of hits like Teenland, Things I Do For Money, and She Ain't Pretty. While the songs often dealt with heartaches and heartbreaks, drummer Don Schmidt says one of the best decisions the band ever made was to break up in 1993. We had just been like 10 years straight. We lived with each other, we toured, we did everything together and we needed a break. And I think because of that breakup, we're back now. Beginning in 2000, reunions have taken various forms. In more recent years, Schmidt, Brian Potman and Jay Semko have toured as a power trio as Merle Brick decided to focus on his job with the city. The departure has led to some changes in the set list for the group. For example, it is now Semko who sings the hit, Teen Land. It took us some time to kind of find our legs as a three-piece. You know, you're pulling out a key voice, a vocalist and another guitar player, and some of the music was kind of designed for two guitars, so, so we, we had to kind of um, reinterpret a little bit. Semko still lives and records in Saskatoon, while Schmidt does photography and runs the Pike's website from near Chilliwack. Potvin resides just outside of Halifax and is focusing on his duo with Kevin Kane from Grapes of Wrath, but still greatly enjoys the occasional gig with these guys. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, I, I really do, and, and you know, the, the music means a lot to us still. I mean, honestly, we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't enjoy it because, I mean, we're actually making good money now, so, I mean, it does make us money, but it's way beyond that because you can do a lot of things to make money, you know, things to do for money. Yes, apparently when you've performed the songs as often as they have, the lyrics begin to seep into their interview answers. But what about the possibility of new Pikes tunes? Well, I don't know. I, we're, it's, uh, it may happen, but uh, it's just sort of an ongoing dialogue that hasn't been firmed up yet, so we'll see. The big question for artists now, I think, is when you make a recording, what do you do with it after? You know, so um, we will do one someday. And while the relationship with their hometown has had its ups and downs, on this afternoon there was nothing but love. 
as an appreciative crowd sang along to the familiar songs that have stood the test of time. We were very cognizant of that when we were, when we were recording uh, those records years ago that we didn't want them to sound 280s or something. They had to kind of sound like, have, try to, we're looking for a timeless quality, you know, production-wise, and I guess we hit it. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Simon Hyatt. Well, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Joining me is dietitian Brooke Bullock, and she's going to tell us why kids need that hearty, healthy breakfast in the morning. Uh, there's actually good research to show that if kids eat breakfast in the morning, they do better in school. Mm. It's also a really good time to kind of maximize their overall nutritional intake. Mm. So we can get a lot of good carbohydrates to get that brain going, to get their energy levels up, good protein to help satisfy their appetite. But mm. uh, breakfast is, is kind of key and just getting those regular meals, those kids need that energy. Exactly. And the morning is always a busy time for families, so it's hard to really make such great meals, elaborate meals for those kids during the days, but you have such great ideas here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you have in front of us. Sure, and just um, the kind of goal was to think what's convenient but yeah. not so, uh, you know, in a box and processed and Good. getting away from the breakfast cereals. We know that that's always a go-to, but looking for something new. If you go for something savory, uh, a muffin tin omelet, they're not pretty, but uh, super tasty, and you can kind of get the kids involved choosing their ingredients that they want in there so there's cheese in there I've put spinach maybe they want peppers or tomatoes instead um, it only takes about five minutes to prep Okay. and about 20 minutes in the oven. And these will last in the fridge for about two to three days. They can be reheated or just taken on the go. This is just a p basic, really super convenient peanut butter banana wrap. This yeah. is one of my favorite easy on the go. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it could be almond butter or cashew butter if there are allergies. Mm -hmm. um, but And of course, this is something for the younger kids they wouldn't be able to have at school if it's peanut butter. Right. But you literally just, a, a small whole grain tortilla wrap loaded up with your favorite nut butter. Um, wrap it up and some people use apple slices or peaches as well you can get pretty creative but nothing more convenient than that lots of energy lots of fiber yeah. lots of protein a little bit of protein with the peanut butter that'll send you off into the morning and banana as a fruit though I find is a great morning start because it has a lot of nutrients in it yeah lots of potassium yeah. and again it's got the fiber so it is going to be digested a little more okay. slowly than say having a juice fuller stomach fuller stomachs yes, yes. Um, slower digestion so that's more like a time to release energy capsule throughout the morning mm. as opposed to having something that's going to spike your blood sugar mm -hmm. and you just have a bit of a rush and then a crash mm. so that's kind of the kicker there with the fresh fruit this is an overnight oats this is one of my favorites so this is great for kids university students and even mm. the working parent um, but really really simple and you get the whole oats full of fiber your favorite berries a lot of uh, calcium uh, in your milk or milk alternative uh, uh, healthy fats and whatever nuts you can really make it your own mm -hmm. but I thought we would just kind of show sort of how to layer it up and then you let it sit in the fridge overnight so okay, here perfect. we start with our third a cup of oats third um, cup of oats and this is just a Slide in? yep you okay. bet and this is just a rolled oat so it's like a I'm whole a mess oat in the or kitchen. a rolled oat yeah <laughs> I'm a messy individual <laughs> Messes right. in the kitchen is a good thing. <laughs> um, pick your favorite berries. As a tip for the university students, I actually purchase the frozen berries oh. because they are far less expensive. Mm. They go on sale more often. Um, you get a bigger bang for your buck. So. Is there a berry that has more nutrients or antioxidants? You know what? Despite all the hype around antioxidant levels <laughs> and what's better, yeah. all fruits and vegetables, even our plain old apples and oranges, yeah. have antioxidants okay. in them. So there, there is a go. little bit of hype there, mm -hmm. uh, but we do know that, that berries um, uh, are good for us, but really pick your favorite fruit. Okay. Uh, I do like the berries because they're easy and convenient. And then you're gonna pick your favorite milk, so a cow's milk or milk alternative, almond milk. Pour that in and that's gonna soften the oats overnight. Mm. I always suggest to pick your favorite fat, and usually it's in a seed form. So I've got the pepitas here, mm. um, or just a shelled pumpkin seed. You could use sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, ground flax seed, um, any kind of seed that you really like. 
And then often I top it off with a little plain yogurt. A little plain um, yogurt. Yeah, so that would just go on top, let it sit overnight, and a little bit of cinnamon to kind of add a bit of flavor. Flavoring. Yeah, so just a little cinnamon on top, and then you just literally close it up. It Stick up. it in the fridge and it's good to go in the morning and that's really going to keep you feeling full and satisfied. Those oats full of the beta, beta uh, glucan, which mm. is good for your cholesterol, mm. all sorts of nutrients in there. All right, quick, easy, nutritious, great breakfast ideas. Brooke has a lot more ideas for meals throughout the day. It's all coming up on today's show. But Brooke, do you know what it means? Back to school means back to school zones. So people out there have to pay attention. Those school zones are now in effect and here's why they're so important. Now that school has started, Saskatoon police are out in full force regulating school speed zones while reminding drivers the dangers of going more than 30 kilometers an hour in designated school zones. If someone comes out in front of your vehicle and you're going 30, you can stop. If you're going 50, you're going to hit them hard and they're going to fly quite a distance and su suffer catastrophic injuries. In 2015, more than 400 tickets were issued to those speeding within a school zone and while hitting anyone with a vehicle can be fatal, the impact a collision has on a child is much more serious. His head is going to be down in the area of the actual collision. A taller person uh, would suffer catastrophic lower body injuries and probably catastrophic upper body injuries after the body folded in half and hit some other part of the vehicle besides the front end. In order to decrease the number of accidents that happen due to school zone speeding, this year the City of Saskatoon has launched a new pedestrian safety campaign. The goal of Roads for All is to educate drivers and pedestrians when it comes to roadway misconceptions. We want to make sure that everyone is aware of what the specific uh, rules of the road are for them. Whether you're a driver, a pedestrian or a cyclist, there are rules that you must follow to ensure everybody's safety. From September to June every year, uh, motorists have to slow down to 30 kilometres an hour when they're in school zones, uh, Monday to Friday from 8 to 5. And this includes statutory holidays or school breaks. One of the most common misconceptions about crosswalks is that they must be marked. The Traffic Safety Act defines a crosswalk as one that's marked or one that's an extension of a sidewalk or at an intersection. So the pedestrian has the right of way at every intersection, whether or not there's markings or signs. And if the dangers of speeding is not enough of a deterrent, Constable Tatterin says drivers should be aware that tickets will put a definite dent in your wallet. If you were to enter a school zone traveling 50 kilometers per hour, your fine would be $230. Uh, it's two dollars per kilometer uh, above the limit. With more than 99 school zones across the city, the Saskatoon Police Force will be conducting a number of enforcement projects throughout the school year. The stopping distance at 50 kilometers an hour is nearly three times that of the stopping distance for 30 kilometers per hour. We're not waiting to let people get used to the fact that there's 30 zones. You know it's September, they will be enforced. For more information, visit saskatoon.ca slash pedestrian safety. Hey folks, it's Larry Krause here with the Timberline Music Show. Join me and my special guest for a half hour of great music right here on Shaw TV. Later on, we learn more on the province's only link leader program. And it's a tasty treat that makes everyone smile, especially those in need of a children's hospital. Punch TV, it's the nerdiest show on the airwaves, featuring artists, geeks, and special guests who love comics, toys, and pop culture. Watch Punch TV, only on Shaw TV. Coming up later in the show, dietitian Brooke Bullock and I will be showing you some healthy grab-and-go snack ideas, perfect for those busy college students or those families who are always on the go. If your kids are involved in sports, here's some pretty cool news. Saskatoon will host a NHL exhibition game on October 4th between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Ottawa Senators. But as Simon Hyde tells us, there will be a star from a different sport there who also has an important message to share. 
During his time playing football for the Huskies, Rough Riders, and Blue Bombers, Scott McHenry saw plenty of big hits. In his new role, however, he's doing his best to make sure the rough stuff stays where it belongs, on the field. What happens on the football field is a little bit different, um, you know, but I can, I can draw a lot of experience from in the locker room and, and seeing, um, you know, seeing maybe a bullying behavior. It does happen and it's, you know, they're, they're different worlds, but, um, you know, the experience that I've had in the sporting world allows me to, you know, to connect with the students. McHenry first began working with the Imagine No Bullying program during his playing time with the Riders, after being encouraged by his teammate Neil Hughes to help out. When his football career came to an end, he stepped into the role of education consultant with the Red Cross Initiative, spreading the message in schools across the province. My life has been sports and, and, and my passion for, you know, football and, and, you know, I've been lucky enough to within six months find something else I'm quite passionate about, um, the ability to help, you know, help kids and, and help this province and to grow future leaders. That effort will continue at the upcoming NHL exhibition game in Saskatoon between the Maple Leafs and Senators on October 4th. Imagine No Bullying will receive funds from program sales and will host special pre-game events featuring Rough Rider players. It's going to help us reach that goal of, 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 of reaching every student in this province and we've always had the support and you know there's there's always people there for us but it's these cool little events and, and to have to see the community come to come together and, and I just think you know that's what the Red Cross is about is community. And while McHenry was known as a great teammate during his playing career the label may be even more fitting in his new job. He says there have been several instances when youngsters have turned to him to share their own experiences with bullying. You know, maybe I don't have the exact words to help, but maybe that, that conversation, just getting that off that kid's chest, you know, just being able to say that to someone, um, you know, that was kind of a surprise to me, but something now, now that I look at it, it's just very special for me to be able to be that person that people can trust. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Simon Hyatt. Scott McHenry. Our next segment is about cooking once and using multiple times. This is something I do constantly. Uh, Brooke, you're going to tell us how people can cook one thing and use it for multiple meals. Yeah, we kind of say it's cook once, eat two or three times. And this is, I mean, preparation is just key. Everybody is on the go, but if you really do want to keep it inexpensive, mm -hmm. a little more healthful, and watch those portions, because as soon as we start eating out, those portions go up, we spend a lot more money. It does take a little bit of planning, but you can make it easier on yourself. So, you know, instead of cooking just the, the amount of chicken breast that you need for that night, make extras. And this is good for university students, for families. Mm -hmm. Make the extra chicken, have one that night. Use the leftovers uh, for maybe a pasta salad the next night. Yeah. Um, that pasta salad then becomes lunch the next day. Okay. So. Use the extra chicken breast, maybe make yourself a chicken and cheese quesadilla. Uh, chicken and cheese quesadilla with salad for supper one night. You make two of them, the other one goes for lunch the next day. Um, side of veggies to just kind of bring that meal to a full circle. And then it should be good in the fridge for about three days. Okay. It's kind of the general rule of thumb. Good chicken stuff. breasts are so easy. You just, yeah. a little salt and pepper, pop them in the oven at about 350. They're done in about 35 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then you can add the flavor by making stuff with them. So again, adding garlic, onion, lots of veggies here, um, and getting a really simple, easy, grab and go meal and talking about grabbing and going fruits are always great for that is it true a fruit a day keeps the doctor away definitely <laughs> and I know that you know juicing is so popular right now ah. but certainly when it comes to the fruit mm -hmm. um, the, the, the fibers in the fruit the soluble and insoluble fibers mm. are so important to our health they help to keep us regular mm. um, they, they lower our cholesterol um, they're good for gut bacteria. They slow digestion, which means that we're not as hungry as quickly. Mm -hmm. We don't have the rise in blood sugars. The whole fruit definitely wins over juice. There's a time and a place for juice, and it all comes down to portion. But yeah, yeah the whole fruit, and nothing more convenient than this. If you kind of have a snack attack, grab a piece of protein <laughs> with it, and you're good to go. I love that snack attack. All right, well, talking about snacks, Brooke still has some healthy grab-and-go snack ideas coming up. Perfect for those university students. Brooke, thank you you so much we'll be right back after the break punch tv it's the nerdiest show on the airwaves featuring artists geeks and special guests who love comics toys and pop culture
Watch Punch TV only on Shaw TV. We're still hanging out in the farmer's market kitchen with dietitian Brooke Bullock as she gets ready to show us some great grab and go snack ideas, perfect for that busy university student. But first we're going to hop over to Walter Murray Collegiate to meet a group of students who themselves are getting ready to head off to post-secondary school. But first they're taking on a leadership roles, welcoming the grade nines to their high school. So I saw you guys today, right? This is today. We want you to look at your time as an investment. We want you to place a value on it. Walter Murray teacher Travis Myrall shares words of wisdom with the high school's newest group of students, the incoming grade nines. The inspirational words were a part of a quick speech given at Walter Murray Collegiate's back to school orientation event. You're already one of us. We welcome you in and we want you here. The grade nines were joined by 35 brightly dressed grade 11s and 12s in link crew shirts, a unique program through the school as it is the only one of its kind in the province. The program is aimed at creating a positive experience for students moving from elementary school to high school while ensuring they are set up for success. This is an all your commitment. You, we will have events. There'll be like a tutoring section sometimes. When I was in grade nine, we didn't have this. So it's sort of like you got lost in school and you didn't know who to go to if you need help besides the teachers because teach adults could be so int intimidating sometimes. So like this where students, we're older, but we're still students. So they could come to us, turn to us whenever they need help. The event assigns small groups of grade nines with a link leader. This older student will serve as a mentor to the newcomers during their first year in high school. It's been fun, like every group, there's the quiet ones and the shy ones, and then again there's the goofy uh, loud ones, so it was cool meeting the new kids. For some of these students, entering a school with hundreds of peers can be intimidating. It was really good, I was, yeah, I thought it was a really good idea just to have, you know, an older, older students you know are there to help you. I learned a bunch of things and saw the tour of the school, so I hopefully won't get lost, <laughs> we'll see. My last school, it was a pretty small school, so there was only one class of grade eight, so I'm really excited to be at a bigger school. A little bit nervous, just, you know, there's a bunch of new people and it's a really big school, but it should be good, yeah, I'm excited. And although the program is dedicated to making the transition for new students as smooth as possible, it also benefits the grade 11s and 12s who have taken on the role of link leader, especially when it comes to preparing for their own future careers. Honestly, I just wanted to get more confident. Uh, like, at first, I never used to like doing presentations. I used to be nervous and stuff, and now I could just stand in front of people and just talk normally so this is to help uh, build my confidence and to uh, expand my leadership skills. In its second year Walter Murray Collegiate's link crew program continues to create friendships and learning experiences for all involved and for grade nine's confidence as they begin a new chapter of their life. Well, Brooke, when I was in college, my diet definitely took a backseat because it's just such a busy time for students. They're always running out of the house, especially between studies. But you have some great grab and go ideas. Tell us a little bit about this one. Um, you know, the bento boxes are amazing, uh, mm -hmm. and these just come from fenigo.com. Okay. But they have all kinds of different lunch packaging that make it fun and easy. Mm -hmm. So, really, what I like to do sometimes is a little bit of a tapas meal. Mm -hmm. So, this could be uh, sort of just if you're looking for things to pick throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, what I've got here, though, is your carbohydrate source, a little bit of fruit, um, some whole grain crackers. Uh, your protein sources, the little mini canned flavored tunas mm -hmm. are so convenient. They do go on sale too, so you can watch for that. Uh, yogurt and uh, vegetable to go along with that. So lots of fiber, lots of slow release energy items, lots of protein to help fill you up. Yeah, how great is tuna for you? And I know a lot of people are sometimes concerned with the mercury aspect. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Uh, tuna is, has a, is a great source of protein. Yeah. And if you are concerned about the mercury, the biggest thing to look for on a can of tuna is the word light. Mm. So canned light tuna indicates that it's a smaller skipjack tuna. 
which means the smaller fish have less mercury in them. So the bigger tuna like albacore uh, will have more mercury. All right, perfect, good to know. And we have right here. Yeah, and so this is just sort of the same a tapas idea, uh, but you've got your favorite raw veggies, hummus. Hummus is uh, uh, yes. made with chickpeas. So this is a chickpea hummus. We know that chickpeas mm -hmm. are grown locally here in Saskatchewan. They're mm -hmm. sustainable crop. And it just so happens to be 2016 is the International Year of the Pulse. No way! So we're really promoting chickpeas, lentils, and beans. Cool. Um, again, those whole grain crackers and some cheese. Uh, cheese is a rich source of B12, mm -hmm calcium, again, protein, mm -hmm. uh, vitamin K. I do have a question about cheese. I've always wondered when you go to the store, you see light cheese, you see normal cheese. What is there a big difference? What's better? The difference is in the saturated fat content, but it is important to note that even the full fat cheese, although it has more saturated fat, there really is no research to support that full fat cheese raises LDL cholesterol uh. um, like other saturated fats do, like butter. Mm -hmm. So so, uh, and I prefer a full fat, really aged cheddar, a full flavor as well. Yeah. It really comes down, in, in my opinion, it comes down to preference. Okay. Brooke, these are all great suggestions. Make sure you head to foodtofit.ca for more suggestions from dietitian Brooke Bullock. Thank you so much, Brooke. Thanks for having me. This Absolutely. Was fun. Always a great time in the kitchen with Brooke Bullock. We'll be right back after the break, so stay tuned. Hey folks, it's Larry Krause here with the Timberline Music Show. Join me and my special guest for a half hour of great music right here on Shaw TV. The focus of today's show has been creating easy to make, nutritious meal and snack ideas for busy families now that school has officially started. But even our registered dietitian agrees that kids deserve a treat from time to time. Tim Horton's Small Cookies are now back for a limited time. It's a tasty way to support a great cause. Welcome to the first Smile Cookie Challenge. Looking to put smiles on the faces of young patients, Tim Hortons, in partnership with the Children's Hospital Foundation of Saskatchewan, invited media personalities to put smiles on these cookies. On the cookie, yeah, there you go. Good job, keep going, keep going, yep, keep going. Good job. Teams of two raced against one another with the goal of being the fastest team to decorate all their smile cookies while blindfolded. Good, okay, almost done. Some teams did quite well while others made a huge mess but regardless fun was had by all including those helped by the Children's Hospital Foundation. I was in the hospital for five days and they didn't know until like the second last day so they took me in for surgery and then I was all fixed so now I'm good. From September 12th to 18th, 100% of proceeds from Tim Horton's Smile Cookies sold in Saskatchewan will go towards supporting the Children's Hospital Foundation. Last year, Saskatoon alone sold more than 54,000 cookies. To learn more about the Smile Cookie campaign, visit timhortons.com slash smilecookies or join the conversation on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag smilecookie. Thanks guys! Well, that wraps up our back-to-school nutritious meal and snack ideas. A big thank you to dietitian Brooke Bullock for showing us all these great, easy ideas. For more information, make sure you head to her website, foodtofit.ca. Don't forget, while you're online, make sure to pop by our social media, our Twitter, our Facebook, and, of course, our Instagram. Thanks so much for joining us on today's show. I'm your host, Janella Hamilton. We'll see you next time.